Why have you chosen to homeschool? Because God knows it's not easy. Hey everyone, welcome back to Project Happy Home. For those of you who are new here, I'm Tanya, doctor lawyer turned homeschool mom of three kids ages 9, 5, and 4. Today my friend Maybid over at Teacher Maybid and I are discussing how to find your why and the importance of finding your why when it comes to homeschooling. Finding your why is one of those terms that gets thrown around a lot today, especially in this age of self-discovery and self-improvement. But with respect to homeschooling in particular, I feel like it's a question we need to address purposefully and repeatedly throughout our homeschool journey. One of those reasons is because initially when we come into homeschooling, for many of us, there are clear reasons why we do. For some of us, we're second generation homeschoolers or third generation, and it was just always what we were gonna do. For other people, they have religious reasons for doing homeschooling. For other people, they have community reasons for homeschooling. Perhaps they don't like the schools in their area or the environment that their children would be put in. For other people, it's bullying concerns. Um, for other people, it's learning issues and for us that's where we fell. Our initial path into homeschooling really centered around my son, my eldest. In kindergarten he started to display signs of distress and was losing that spark in his eye and I very much did not want that to continue in the school environment. My son is twice exceptional, he has ADHD and he is gifted and both of those learning differences were not being met adequately in our public school system. Now I had the option of doing other things like private school or specialty tutoring or IEPs, etc. But for us, when I did my research, I felt like I owed it to my kid to try out a year of homeschooling to see whether this would be an environment in which he could thrive. So our initial reason was very much his own learning differences. Now, my reasons have evolved since then, and my whys have changed as my daughters have been added to the mix and as my relationship with my son has grown. I want to emphasize that there's no one correct why. If your why, for example, is religious in nature, and if you really want to incorporate your religion and your moral values into the fabric of your homeschool, that's your why, and if that's your primary focus, on why you've chosen this mode of education for your kids, all the rest of your decisions should fold into that why or at least be in accordance with that why. For myself, one of the first things I noticed as we started incorporating the girls in homeschooling was just how much fun we were having and how much closeness we had. And by closeness, I mean the good kind and also the bad kind. I mean being on top of one another all the time, not having free time on my own, um, bickering between siblings, etc. But that close weave of our family is one of my biggest whys for homeschooling now. I really think that through the bickering and the fights and the hugs and the making up and the movie nights and poetry tea times and all of that, this bond is growing and we know one another really, really well. And so one of my main whys for homeschooling is to craft this home environment of closeness and calm and just having a rhythm to our days that works for us, that honors each of us, but also allows us to meet over and over throughout the day, to be together, to connect, to deepen and strengthen those memories and those bonds. In this year, in this season of my life, that is my biggest why, is crafting this tight fabric of family, this tight weave between us as family members. And I have actually overloaded our schedule this fall, and the reason that happened is because I lost sight of my why. I started to think, you know, last year we had a big moving year, we didn't get to do a lot of activities and things like that the way I would have liked to. So this year, in my enthusiasm and a little bit of guilt over not doing that, I definitely overloaded our schedule and I failed to account for the fact that we now live in the boonies and I have been driving around way more than I wanted to. But it was really healthy for me to reflect on what happened there? Why was I feeling so distressed? Why are the kids so tired? Why am I so crabby in all frankness this fall? And it's because I made decisions without keeping my why framely in my mind. So that's why I feel like finding your why is so essential to homeschooling. 
for everything you choose to do, there is something else that you're saying no to. For every yes, there is another no. So try to make your yeses be heck yes. Like the ones you really wanna do, the things that really resonate with your why. If you wanted to craft an environment of nature study and you really want your kids to be outside and that's one of your biggest whys, you want them to have that rich childhood of like outdoor exploration and everything, then your curriculum choices, your activity choices, your rhythm for your day, your routines, all should be in accordance with your why. And that's why no one person's homeschool is gonna look like someone else's because all of our whys are going to be different. They're going to largely fall in different categories and then even within those categories, they are going to be different and unique and individual. So when I reflect upon the choices I made for this fall, I made my choices based on a lot of other people's values. I met a wonderful homeschool group this, this past spring, and a lot of those moms tend to do a lot of activities, and I thought, I learned about these activities, I thought, I want to try that out too. And I did, but I failed to account for our why. It does not build that closeness for me. It does not build that togetherness as a family going here and there every single day doesn't afford us the time and calm to really grow together as a family. And that's just me. For other moms, it might work out really well. But for my children and I, it really doesn't work that way. For us, we do much better when we can wake up in a leisurely fashion where I can sing to them without any note of urgency in my voice in the morning, where we can have a leisurely breakfast and then start off with our read alouds and move in through the day. And if somebody wants to fold in a craft or an activity, it's no big deal because there's nowhere we have to be in half an hour or an hour. My motivations were good and my children have certainly enjoyed many of the activities, but I failed to account for our why, and I failed to account for the fact that driving here and there is not really conducive to my family's closeness. And for other moms, it might work out just great because their why is different. But for me, considering that my primary why is to craft this tight bond between us, to nurture our relationships with each other, I really need to consider what makes us most able to relate to one another in a good and healthy and growing way. And that is rest for us. We like to wake up in a leisurely fashion. We like to have a lot of bandwidth to do whatever activities we want and then do math and then do English and then do history, but to also do weaving and a random episode of cosmic yoga and all of those things. And a lot of those randoms have lost out because I have to get the kids in the car to go to some activity. I advise you strongly to craft your why today. I am not one of those people who thinks you need a homeschool statement of like purpose or goals or any of those things. But broadly, when you think to yourself, what do you want your kids to remember about homeschooling? When somebody asks them when they're older, so you were homeschooled, like what was that like? What is it you want them to say? Do you want them to say, oh, it was just this amazing outdoor adventure. We went outside for a nature walk every day and we collected things for our nature table and everything. Um, do you want them to say, it was just like being in a library every day. We read and I read and my mother read aloud to us and um, we had tea parties and we read poetry to each other. Do you want them to say we um, did so many activities. We like took archery classes and we did whatever we wanted and I was interested in pottery so we did pottery class and you know we explored that at home. What do you want them to remember? Like, what do you want them to walk away from this experience with? Because it's really important. It's more important than the curricula we choose. It's more important than the activities we sign them up for. It's more important than their SAT score eventually, or what college they go to, or what profession they end up with. These are the days of our lives, and what you do every day should be in tune with your why. Why have you chosen to homeschool? Because God knows it's not easy. It's not easy. And I think a lot of introductory homeschool videos and homeschool channels and Instagram feeds portray it as this wonderful array of crafts and art supplies and glorious read-alouds where everyone is like 
cheerful and chipper and we all know you and I know that it is not that way it's not that way frequently and often throughout the day we have wonderful moments we have wonderful hours days there is a lot of struggle there are lots of attitudes there's lots of I don't want to do math today or I can't believe we're still reading this book it's a baby book it's for her it's not for me all of these things that we deal with there's a lot of bickering there's a lot of slam doors and noise and all of this is a real thing there's a lot of awkwardness with other moms when you go to a new activity or a new co-op it is not the easiest road it is a lot easier to wake your kids up and put them on the school bus it is i, I will come out and just say that that is easier than homeschooling so why have you chosen this what is your real deep down motivation? Find it, write about it, meditate on it, and when you plan out your year, when you go through the math curriculum, when you pick out whether you're gonna do teaching textbooks on the computer or you're gonna do math mammoth on the page or what have you, what is your goal? What is your why? If your choice is not in alignment with your why, really reflect upon whether it's necessary because there are only so many hours in a day and so many hours in a week and so many hours in a year. We cannot do all the things. So many of the things that this amazing homeschool community does on social media is incredible. So many of those things, but we cannot do all of them. So in an effort to better choose for yourself and your kids, which ones you pursue, really hone your why. And that why can change from year to year and from month to month. And you can reassess as your children grow and as you grow as a person as well. But hone it, focus on it, wake up with it and make your decisions based on it. Your decisions and how you interact with your children, your in decisions on your curriculum, your decisions on your activities, your decisions on your routine, your decisions on how long you homeschool, um, whether you do year round or just breaks or Sabbath homeschooling or what have you, make them resonate with your why. I hope this video was helpful, you guys. Go ahead and find your why today and see if it aligns with the decisions you've made for homeschooling. Don't forget to check out my friend Mavid's video at Teacher Mavid. I will link her channel up above and down below. She has wonderful ideas and a great homeschooling channel, so if you're not following her already, I really do recommend it. And I wish you guys the very best day.